Hello and welcome to the Churros E-Tacticus Podcast. It is March 12th. It is Tuesday. We are some, uh, what, less than five hours re- remaining, five hours behind. I don't know what the word is. My English is not working right now. We are less than five hours away. That's the word I was looking for, Diego. We are less than five hours away from the biggest game in the season for FC Barcelona. And, correct. Um, well, apart from Classico, we know that's like your real trophy. If you if you lose it, you play well, that's a trophy. If you win it, you play well for, you know, for another two games. If you lose it, your whole season's over. But Napoli coming to town. You guys are missing players. A lot of money on the line, Diego. Money is on the line for Barcelona, not just pride, not just advancement, money. You guys need money. Mm, so it's a big night, man. Really How are you feeling, Diego? Yes, my man, I'm feeling good. Maybe, maybe just like give the gain knob like a little, little softer, a little bit. I told you, I told a you. Little, a little, recording. little, like, like not like before. What's this? Bit. How's this? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Perfect. Just so listeners know, we tested this beforehand and Diego approved the mic setting that he just disapproved. I guess that was before you start rolling off the churros. That's true. I I, I hyped I hyped up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey man, how am I? I'm I'm the champion. These are the days. These are the days we live for, man. It's uh, it's good to feel this feeling. You know, the the, the in one way, it's good to feel. That feeling, the hype of the Champions League knockout stage being back. Uh, God knows, Kule, God knows. Um, us Barca fans, we appreciate these nights. We know what it's like not to have these nights. So to have a night like this roll around is in and of itself already a trophy, if you will, Kian. Uh, now, add to that the money that is on the line. I said literally... And figuratively, Uh, there's a lot of mixed feelings right now, man. There's a lot of fear, uh, at least fear in my belly, in the pit of my stomach. I have uh, the absolute pleasure and honor to be calling the game live tonight. Mm -hmm. Live? Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm very excited for it. But also, yeah, I'm not going to lie, man. Uh, Trepidatious at the same time. There's uh, too many bad memories lingering. And this has not been a season to brag about, to feel braggadocious, to brag and boast about our good form. You talked about players missing, the likes of Balde, Pedri, uh, Frankie. Uh, you know, do I need to continue? Um, <clears throat> it's going to be tough. Gabi, Gabi. I mean, these are the nights where Gabi, you know, we could use some of Gabi. We could definitely use Pedri and Frankie. Uh, we could use players that are able to instill not, I wouldn't say patience, I would say control. But, but, but by control, I also mean, um, does this make sense? Energetic control. I often feel with Barca matches this season, Kian, that this team is trying to take the slow and steady composed approach. Mm-hmm. And that then lasts for the, you know, the the uh, uh, entirety of the game, and we end up with a nil nil at our hands, or we end up with like a one nil either way, and then having to make haste or you know defend our goal line uh, at all costs. And so so, uh, you know, we're we're <sighs> tonight is not the night. Napoli, I don't know what they did in their last outing. I know they coming off fresh, somewhat fresh off of beating Sassuolo 6-1, La Vecchia Señora 2-1. That was it's, three games ago now. Oh, they so just they that. laid an egg against Torino at home, 1-1. 1-1. I did see that. I did see that. But um yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, you, you kind of feel like I feel and maybe you disagree. Barça have a lot more to lose. Than Napoli, I feel like for Napoli, it's like I would say more pressure, more pressure, more pressure for Barca, yeah. And this pressure applied to this group of you know young players, players that are 
meaning, you know, that are not used to this kind of pressure that I don't want to have to submit or not submit to this pressure, but uh, hold accountable or responsible for getting us over the hump or not with the veteran players that are, you know, not necessarily in their prime. I think that that goes without saying. Uh, Lewandowski at 35 is not in his prime. Gundogan at what is he? The good age of 33, roughly 34, is still a very good football player, but <clears throat> not in his prime necessarily. And I'm hoping that based on what we've seen this season from these players so far, the way that this team has been playing football, executing Xavi's game plan, I'm hoping tonight is going to be mm, the complete, <laughs> the, the complete contrary and um you know we've seen it in spurts in some games we saw it you know i always go back to the betis game more recently um what, what would be a good example of recent one well, no, getafe for example but uh i'm hoping tonight we'll be able to damper probably the excitement with which the naples team is going to come to town with with a gung-ho attitude, nothing to lose, and that we're able to, yeah, counter that with, you know, oozing out confidence and, and energy, Kian. That's what I'm hoping, man. Can we can we get a freestyle from you? It's like that would no. manifest your feelings right now? I feel like you're in an emotional state. It would be really good. Do you want to try one? No, no not tonight. Not today. Maybe not later. Today. Well, I'm not in the, the the most of freestyle mood. It's uh, I'm I'm very tired actually. I I was gonna say I hope it's not showing on the camera, but I I'm on very little sleep. Uh, I just told you off camera uh, some of the things that I'm juggling at the time, and it's taken away from. I'm on like four hours sleep at the moment. I'm far from being in a in a freestyle mood. See when you put the beat. The beat has to be matched with the heat, does it not, my friend? All right, we'll come back to it. Um, <laughs> leave it, leave it. Let me, let me, let me get into okay. this. All right. No, no, but I mean, let's, let's, you know, keep shooting the shit in the meantime. So, I had, I guess, some thoughts conflicting in my head about this game tonight. All right. My head tells me if I had no dog in the fight. Looking at this objectively, I guess top down, I don't care about Napoli, I don't care about Barca. Let's just assume those two things are true. I'm actually obsessed with Barca, you know that. Classical. But let's pretend I, I'm not. I just, like, given Barca's mental state, given their injuries, given the fact that Napoli, who have been struggling most of the season, actually since that Barca game, where they played a bit better in the second half and then have scored nine goals in their last three games. They have counter-attacking ability. They have a player who I personally love watching in Kavara. Scored a brilliant goal recently, actually. Um, a problem of a target man that you can hit in the box in Osiman. When I put all those things together, I, I actually would feel good about Napoli's chances in this situation. And Barca's Champions League history, all that. Not that Napoli have a great one recently, obviously. But recently, you know what I'm saying. No. My heart... That was my head talking. My heart tells me... Nah, this is not... This is... Uh, Barca is gonna, just going to take care of business. It might not may not be ugly. It may be beautiful. I, I don't know what it is. But I just feel like Barca are the better team overall when you stack it all together. And they have a kid who's in great form. They'll put it together. They'll advance. Not Do saying like a 5 nil, but I'm saying like a 1-0, one, one 2-0, nil, 2-1, two nil, two something like that. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll sign up to any of those uh, outcomes, to be really honest. Um, my question ahead of the game is as well, like, yes, he is... Pro I mean, without a doubt, I would say, our most informed player at the moment. And Lamina Mal is is destined to you know write more pages of history, glorious pages at that, with Barca um, in the world of football. But I wonder whether or not you would like Xavi will start him tonight, 
And the reason I wonder that is you addressed the dynamics in and around the team, the famous Entorno as well, uh, the games at the Camp Nou or the um, U.S. Compagne Stadium have been far from home games. Uh, you know, all of this talk before actually playing games there, we often address the fact that, you know, this is this is not the Camp Nou. This is not 100,000 people. This is you know, 30 plus thousand if you're, if you're lucky because the turnout is as well. Uh, Which is crazy. Mm, mm, crazy. Mm, yeah. Okay, fine. You don't want to go to the Monjuic for a game against Cadiz. Fine. Season on the line? Champions oh, League knockout? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see the, the turnout tonight. But my point being is like the atmosphere in the stadium has not been, you know, electrifying. I wonder, and, and the mood that is currently set within Barca and that that's on and off the pitch is is far from optimal. My question is, if you start a player like Lamine Yamal, are you... <laughs> the potential of setting up damaging goods, do, do you know what I mean? Like if Barca lose, if he hits the post, if, um, I don't know if he'll have the responsibility of taking a penalty, but it goes to penalty shootout, he misses... Wouldn't you prefer to have a young player like that who's so in form actually come off the bench no. kind of in case if, because if things start, don't turn our, uh, um, if things don't go our way from the get go, I have a feeling that Vic, it could like that balloon could inflate really, really quickly. And it could potentially be one of those traumatic nights. No, you give yourself the best chance of winning from the start. And you increase your margin of error by playing the best players. Right now, Yamal is your best attacker. It's not even close. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked at how many people push back on this idea. Like, oh, you don't want to run the kid into the ground. Okay, fine. Don't is play it many him. People? I don't know. But that, that's my opinion. There is. Okay. There is. There, take a look at Barca social media. Mm -hmm. If you don't, don't want to play him every game in La Liga, fine. I, I, I subscribe to that notion. I'm not going to disagree with you there. But... In the game, you have to win. In the biggest game, he should be there, man. He's your best attacker right now. Yeah. And so this idea of like, oh, save him for the bench. We don't want to put too much pressure on him. Like, but, what, but, if the, what if the game is over by then? What if yeah. what if Napoli score an early goal and then Barca start chasing and the game yeah. opens up and it's two? And then, God forbid, the, you know, more than that. But like, what if it's over by then? What You, you gotta, you can't put yourself in that position, if you ask me. But I'm, I'm thinking of like, let me use an example that is closer to your heart. Rodrigo this season. Yeah. In the recent past, recent history, an Asensio coming off the bench, being crucial in Champions League knockout stages. That adds and gives an, gives an added oomph, an added punch, unexpected, if you will, for the opponent. Do you not understand it from that angle? I, I, I do, but I also think that it's a risky game to play. So I know that we came back against City and we got the job done against Chelsea after a disastrous game at the Bernabeu and then in PSG in the second half, insane comeback. But let's not sugarcoat it. Like, yeah, there was epic and we'll never forget it, but it's a risky game to play. You think it was part of the plan for Rodrigo to come in and score two goals in the last second against Manchester City? Mm. You know, I, what, what, I mean, what th that situation is a little bit unique, Diego, in that Carlo Ancelotti act also changed his tactics when he brought on those subs. He started to press for the first time in the, in, in the entire two legs. Ancelotti never pressed until the end of the second leg in all three of those ties. And that was his strategy. He spoke about this in press conferences. Like, we knew they can't sustain their energy. We wanted to save our aggressiveness for the end and catch them off guard. I don't, like, this situation is a little bit different to me also in that. And by the way, those like like Rodrigo Camavinga, for example, especially in the case of Camavinga right now, those guys came off the bench at a time where they weren't really displacing the starters. Kamavinga has graduated from the, the bench chaos role to now being an important starter for Real Madrid in most games. Um, 
in this particular case, I think Barcelona is going to play the same way either way. And so it's going to be hard for you to create clear-cut chances and put them away without Yamal, if you ask me. Mm. That's all. Mm. So I, I, I would, I just, I just think it's a little bit of a risky game to play that in that sense. Yeah, and plus, no. Yamal can probably go the full ninety. He's young enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, he's 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 the best player right now, uh, the most informed player, and the one that creates, the one that really also sacrifices himself for the team. His defensive uh, sacrifices have been noticed, duly noticed. And appreciated by uh, yours truly, uh, even you know in 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 games where <clears throat> you would forgive him probably for not tracking back as much as as he does. But in his case, more importantly, offensively, it's like I can't believe it. But he's he's the guy, like he's that go to guy. With all respects to Rafinha, uh, you know Robert Lewandowski, obviously, and. Uh, and Joao Felix, who who has been fine and and has also added to creating danger. When you compare it to Alamin Yamal, it's just it's night and day. I'm just fearful. I'm scared. I can already see the mood set in if Napoli scores first, and you know the trauma start exposing themselves start coming out of the closets uh, again the the champions league ghosts of the recent past you're that, getting me excited stop you, you yeah. just stop jinxing it like there i'm just like i don't know i i'm just kind of like setting myself up for another depressing traumatic night to be really honest i i'll say it right here i mean i have no problem saying it i think we're going to get knocked out tonight i do i don't i don't i don't feel good about going into this match tonight I'm getting i'm getting butterflies in my stomach diego oh i love oh, this stop, stop. we gotta stop i i personally i think barcelona will wipe the floor with napoli wipe yamala is gonna score a hat trick and oh, he's gonna stop. be and he's gonna be like carried and and in front of the fans he's gonna do the iconic messy celebration where he puts the jersey up and and it's gonna be just epic and barcelona are gonna don him the next messy it's gonna be insane um is but, that you you truly Expect a, a glorious night like that, or, or yeah, absolutely. I also think, like, I don't know. It, it, when I look at Barca's attack, I know Rafinha is kind of like this weird player where um, he's he seems frustrating to watch. And I, to me, when I watch him play, and I when I watch Yamal play, I think the difference to me, like in their body language and all that stuff. It's just that Yamal seems a little bit more mentally strong and better with his decision making. Did we did we speak after the athletic game? Yeah. We did. So one of the things I think I told you was that Yamal, when he got, got the when he when he had the ball, he would always make the right decision and the right play. And it was not always easy because he was surrounded by athletic players in transition. And then when he got the ball out of his feet and passed it along, it, it would usually break down after he had to trust his teammates on something. And and it and it's crazy to think that a 16-year-old, is he 16 still? I, still 16. 16, okay. Uh, has that level of presence on the field um, compared to, to players who are much older than him. Anyways, yeah. back to what I was saying about Rafinha. Rafinha is a frustrating player to watch in some sense, but also... It's interesting to look at the numbers, and you and I have talked about this before, that um, he his numbers aren't bad. Like, the the, it, the stats tell us that he does create mm -hmm. enough chaos yeah. to to be useful. And I wonder if, like, you, you can actually play them both on both wings to optimize your your the, the amount of chances you generate and just hope and pray that Lewandowski scores goals. Um, here's, a, here's a super chat. To me, it's kind of funny, but I think some people are taking this seriously. Nishlish Patel says, what's the deal with Lamin Yamal's age being fake? Have you come across this at all? I did, to, you know, just today. Uh, earlier today, I saw that a Madridista account, I forget which one. Girona account. A Girona account? Yeah. Okay. 
It's a it's that, an account called Girona Zone. It's one of these ag- lovely aggregators. They're all so lovely. They you know okay. they do so much good work, productive work for everybody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, no, I definitely saw it from a, a Madridista account. But regardless, um, say like alluding to an article where La Mina Mal is wearing the 2015 jersey, uh, and in sport, there's talking about the 10 year old La Mina Mal. Um, quickly dispelled thanks to a lot of people in the in the commentary section mind you a lot of madridistas even saying not everything goes not everything uh should be allowed it's uh they cropped out that image an article from 2017 so uh yes he was wearing a jersey from two years back but that article was written in 2017 when he was indeed 10 years or uh, 10 years of age what what has to go through your mind to just wake up suddenly one day and decide you know what i'm going to crop an image and just tweet some bullshit engagement clout right i mean that's that's all that matters now is clicks this is why i hate anonymity grow some fucking balls put your picture behind it put your name behind it mm. So, because if 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 we're all held accountable and we know who everyone is, you don't you don't get this nonsense tweeted. It's a it's a yeah. mess. Yeah. Um, so right. can I just add something uh, to to your point on Rafinha? It's not even sure he's going to be able to play tonight. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's still doubtful after being also injured okay. in uh, the last game that we played. Uh, Jesus, we played Mallorca. Mallorca on um, Friday. Yes. And um, so he's he's doubtful. I don't know if he's actually confirmed fit. So as it stands, it's Torres, Gavi, Frankie, Balde, Pedri out for sure. And then possibly Rafinha. And Mar- uh, Marcos Alonso, of course. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Dude, by the way, uh, to our loyal watchers, loyal listeners, my apologies for not being able to uh, come good, come clean with a, a churros, pod, a, a Patreon edition pod. It's been just pretty manic, and it was my intention, 100%, my sole purpose and intention to come to you guys with a pod, uh, but I, I just couldn't do it. And uh, everything will go back to normal once my WAF returns tomorrow, uh, which I'm looking forward to so that I can pay more attention to you. So, I mean, I thought it would be really fun if we did a Barca Napoli live yeah. stream. Yeah. Because, like, I, I can't do a live stream during Real Madrid games because I'm working. It would be impossible. Uh, managing. But managing. I could do it at a non Real Madrid game. And I thought it was like, it'd be fun to do it. But yeah. in the end, you can't. And also, I'll, I'll be with the kids and I don't, I don't, you know, it's not going to be great. That, me and the kids are actually watching it together. Okay. Arlo, my youngest son, won't really care. He'll just be walking around. He might like some, if there's a goal, he'll be like, oh, cool. But Luca yeah. will watch. And yeah, Luca he... has, has been watching games with me. And oh, wow. So I'm, I'm going to be initiating him tonight to, okay, you see the great blue news. team? That's the good guys. Great. The blue news. and red team, those are the bad guys. So Dude, you have to so funny. <laughs> Yesterday, my uh, daughter, my youngest, she's four, uh, almost turning five. And my oldest, he's eight, almost almost nine. Anyway, at some point, I'm like, you know, cleaning the kitchen, whatever. We had just had dinner. And I see Joya is super sad. Like, she's proper, visibly, you know, sad and angry. And she's like by herself. And I was like, what's up? What are you, what's going on? Why do you have that face? And she's like, Lorenz. Like, she goes, Lolo just like Lorenzo is his name. Lolo just called me a Madridista. I am not a Madridista. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Good, good, good uh, values that we're teaching here in this household, as you can see. Little does she know she was actually being complimented. <laughs> But uh, so, but that's good though that he's already sitting down watching uh, games at full length. Even my oldest son, who plays football, will not watch games with me. He's just Papa Flo is right. The attention span is not there, man. It's uh, it might also be that you know Barca are garbage <laughs> in recent years, so it might have something to do with it. 
I'd like to explore some. I would, I would, I would like to create some tension in the podcast, if that's okay. Here we go. That's what we're good at. Something that we've we haven't discussed is, um, and I don't know why we haven't. I think we haven't recorded, or we just haven't since, or I forgot to bring it up since some of these things have come up. Um, <clears throat> you've been sending me like passive aggressive laughing emojis on some of my stuff. So there was two recently. One of them was my, I think it was a tweet about how it's irrefutable that Cristiano Ronaldo is the greatest player in Champions League history. And you laughed. I need, I need to know, I need to understand the laughing emoji. Please explain. Why do you love to circle back? I feel like you throw this topic out just at your convenience, whenever you're like, oh yeah, you go over it's your because it's not a closed discussion. It's not. It's, it's you just go, you it's go over your notes. O- open. It's always open. It's never ending. Listen. I just want to know, like, do you disagree with that statement? That's all. Yeah, I do. I do. I well, think I, the greatest player in football history. No, that wasn't Leon the Messi. discussion. That wasn't the, what we're talking about. But isn't that then just like why why limit it to the Champions League? When because we're separate, is- we're separating it. We're, so oh. you can have an opinion that he's right. not the goat of the entire every. If you factor in everything, if you want, mm-hmm. I would still dispute it. But I think that's a fine opinion to have. Mm-hmm. But if you're talking about the Champions League specifically, okay, I look. I'll say, this. I'll say this: Cristiano Ronaldo has wait, been. Wait. Oh, let me timestamp twenty six minutes. Here's many, here's many. <laughs> Take note, TikTok. <laughs> has had more success on the Champions League stage than than Leo Messi. I think uh, <clears throat> that's that's an accurate and fair statement to make. Okay. Okay. So then there was no need for the the laughing emoji. Yeah, but I laugh because you always put these things out there and. I know you're like, I feel like you're trying to get a knee jerk reaction out of me. It's uh, fuel like you, you're trying to just, you know, tempt me into something so that you can bring it out at a random moment. <laughs> <coughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> it's good for your soul. No, but not good for my throat. All right. Um, Ooh, you want to freestyle I got, now? I got a handle on it. Um, but too too bad um, he's not able to translate that success over to the other greatest tournament in the world, huh? Yeah, yeah. Complete got, failure. Yeah. Got knocked out yesterday. No, I'm serious. <laughs> that he is not the goat of the Asian Champions League. So sad. I don't know who is. Is Messi the go to the Asian Champions League too? You want to claim that one just in case? Anything? Uh... I, mean, I mean, that's that's an obvious statement. <clears throat> okay, cool. There was another one, but it's kind of a more of a dark, dark one. But we, maybe Uh-oh. we can bring it forward to next week. Um, I, okay. I can I can see where the where it would go. <laughs> we can entertain it. Well, this one is more like. You also sent a laughing emoji about um, this one was a tweet too, I think. It was the one before the Valencia shit show at the Messiah. Yeah. Where I posted the image of Hugo Duro putting Vinny in a chokehold. Yeah. And uh, just brought up the fact and reminded people that Valencia media portrayed him as the one who provokes. And you laughed at that. And I want to I want to explore oh, that. Yeah, too. because because I laughed that I don't remember your caption, but you even called me blind. something like blind fanatic. or fan fanatic. Yeah, fanatic, fanatic, radical, you radical, a, a radical fanatic, uh, which I can be, to be fair. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, because no, because you're you're in those when you put out those things, it's it's. You know, not balanced. It's it's very one sided, and I think you're completely dismissing also the fact that Vinny got a red card there. He was 
ejected out of the game for an aggression, for an assault on, I think it was Hugo Duro, uh, a red card that then miraculously was taken away as if he didn't lash out and physically assault the Valencia player. What? Mm, he did. He was expulsed from that game, and that game was, uh, that red card was redacted. Diego, Diego you're misremembering. Is it? Hugo no, Duro. Sure it was that game. Hugo Duro put Vinicius in the chokehold. Hmm. Vinny reacted to that hmm. and got a red card. Mm -hmm. Well, Hugo then, Duro was just walking on the pitch after as if nothing, he did nothing wrong. But Vinny, okay. So they both should have got a red card. What did Vinny do? He just reacted to getting choked. And like, and so who put the chokehold? If the chokehold came first and Vinny is the pr one who provokes, that makes no sense. Do you, do well, you yeah, understand you, what I'm saying? Who's, see, if, I, if I come up to you and, and, and choke you, and you react, who provoked, me or you? I did. I, I'm not saying it who provoked what in that in that particular instance. I think Vinny is a walking provocateur, uh, for sure. I think Vinny lives off of provoking the crowd around him. And he now has this special relationship with uh, the Mestalla faithful that, <clears throat> you know, he enjoys his, his uh, back and forth with them. But in that instance... Yes, Hugo Duro came up and did that first, but then he lashed out and he was shown the red card. That was then afterwards. Excuse me, my my throat. Afterwards, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that that red card was taken away and he wasn't. Uh, he didn't face any sanctions after that. Nor should he have. I and I. I this is crazy to me. I. This is why I didn't want to get into this one. But come on, man. The, if the guy. The, the, the guy, the guy walking into Valencia if, if, before if, setting foot in the stadium was racially abused by fans outside the stadium, then inside the stadium. Then he gets put in a chokehold and he's yeah. not allowed to react. He just has to be this this nice, yeah. polite boy like and, and and do nothing. Is is the an eye for an eye rule? Does that fly in society? If if I'm walking along the street and somebody assaults me and I assault them back. Do I not face any repercussions or ramifications for that? If somebody could, crashes into me you? and I chase them down and crash into them, and I say, yeah, but he did it first, do I not face any ramifications? I think I do. Uh, no. Do you defend yourself? Defending yourself is not assault. Hugo grabbed him from behind. Yes. Cheap Vinny shot, disgusting assaulted. behavior, put him in a chokehold. Sure. Uh, Vinny what, lashed a, out. I, what are you what are you going to do in that situation dude i try to be a good person week, but i would definitely week, react to that this last week we saw what Vinny is capable of unprovoked i and i, and I, I didn't i didn't like doesn't. i didn't like that he did that diego i didn't like the leipzig uh double push and i didn't like the way he reacted to Mingesa either mm. but i'm I, but that specific message that i put was specific to that that instance is what i'm saying then okay. if you want to get into a whole other discussion, that's another okay. thing. I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he does, but mm. I also I also think, and I said this last night, you know my favorite saying, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I think he goes through and, and gets abused maybe more than anyone we've ever seen. And that, that was Ancelotti's own words in a press conference. He's gone back and he's never seen anyone be constantly, every game, um, be the direct source of... Uh, people getting uh, someone getting abused as much as he has. But I also think the other extreme of people who say, well, now this gives him a free pass to behave however he wants is also not, not the correct sense either. So I think it's, it's it, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Um, do you want to, this has now opened up. A, this is great. This has opened up a can of worms of, um, of course it super chats. <clears throat> Sheikh Hatiri says, D Diego, do you agree that your goat didn't deserve the 2010 Ballon d'Or after fading in the World Cup and only winning the league and Schneider deserved it? Wesley, uh, what a guy. What a guy, Wesley. 2010, Spain wins the World Cup, Barca win the league. And then some, no? What else did we win in 2010? I don't know if we only won the league. In any did case... You just, did you just say Spain won the World Cup as your list of achievements? 
No, I'm saying the peop- the the three that were on the podium was Xavi, Andres Iniesta, and Leo Messi. Of those three, me personally, I would have given it to either Xavi or Andres. Um, but, you know, that's not to say that the best player in the world of football at that time is and was Leo Messi. Who won the, the Champions League that year? Well, I'm guessing it was Inter if if he mentions Snyder. And who won the who won the uh the treble? <clears throat> the treble? Yeah, that year. Well oh Inter? Inter. Who was the best player on the treble winning team and in the Champions League? It's it's World Cup year, bro. You know how the World Cup you know how it goes with the Okay, but the, the conversation is less about it it Anyways, your answer to this is no, I guess. No. My answer would be I would have loved to have seen Xavi or Iniesta win. But that year in and of itself was, you know, that that podium was was a dream come true. And, you know, even though Xavi went, I think, like three or four consecutive years of being third on the ballot, <clears throat> you know, that would have been the year where he should have, yeah, come out. On top, I would I would say. I just remembered another thing, but that I wanted to bring up. Um, but I don't know why to get into it now, unless you want me to just do a flyby and just spit it out and then leave it. I am pro-abortion. I am anti-death penalty. I I, I believe same-sex marriage should be allowed. Uh, what else? Yeah, actually, I would had no interest in going that direction at all. Um, <laughs> I just wanted, I way? just wanted, I was just reflecting on our Modric Cruz debate, oh. and uh, I kind of realized, and I went through, and I on all these things we said, and I said, and you said that I, I, I don't think Xavi is better than Cruz. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I think Cruz is better. Do you want to get into it now, or you want to, you want to table it? You're a radical fanatic. Uh, every single argument you had for for Xavi, I just well, he, told you he that won Xavi a World Cup, back he to won back a Euro, he was it, on the podium three like one got was third in the Ballon de Oro, de Oro votings three times in a row, maybe even four times, and you're sitting here telling me now that Kroos is better. You're yeah. you're gaslighting is what you're doing, and I will not stand for it. At at the the two things that Xavi specialized in was uh, press resistancy. And passing, Cruz is better than him. Xavi and your arg- and your argument game. and your argument about uh, well, your because your I argument mean, against Modric. No but by the time. way, now you're bringing up Ballon d'Ors because you didn't you didn't value Modric's Ballon d'Or at all. But now you're now you're valuing podium moral victory podium and not the actual many, Ballon d'Or. Show me the clip where I say that I call a smear campaign right now. This is false, wrong, wrong, fake news. Fake, I'm going full Trump on your ass. That is not true. I did not, never say that. So does Ballon d'Or matter or not? Well, I mean, like, you know, who are the people voting for the Ballon d'Or? Does it, so does it, who are the it, people it, voting okay. for the Ballon d'Or? <laughs> to you, so it matters to you if a Barca player wins it, but if it's a Madrid player who's who wins that? it, who's I, voting? Who's who voting? Said that? Who's, who's saying that? You're saying that. I never said that. No, because you, because when we had the Mordor Chavi debate, yeah. you didn't see Mordor's Ballon d'Or as something that would give Chavi the one up. You saw it as uh, something that he didn't, you know, you didn't value it. But now you're valuing Chavi's podium I do appearances. You value it. You didn't mention it at the time. I, it's not like you mentioned it and I went, I didn't, I, I didn't mention it because I just thought it in was fact, so I tell obvious. You what did ha- in fact, I'll tell you what did happen, Mr. Sobani. Mr. Sobani. I'll tell you what did happen. I said, Chavi won Euro Cup, World Cup, Euro Cup, back to back to back. And you said, Pfft. no, you said that didn't count. No. Okay. Okay. Now, now let's go. This is the actual smear. This is gaslighting. So what happened was you punished Modric for being Croatian, basically, and not winning the World Cup because he didn't win it with Croatia when Chavi won. Okay. So now since that, since, since you think it, by the way, again, the complete lottery of where you're born. You have no control over that. You have no control. Alfonso Davies will never win a World Cup. Much to the pain in my heart. But if he was on that Spain team, he would have. It's not his fault. Anyways, 
I don't know if he would make the team right now. He's not having the best seasons. Davies is fine. Since you brought up World Cup and Euro Cup victories, Cruz you has, brought up Cruz has both. both. Cruz has both and better Champions League legacy. I'm calling it. Cruz is better than Chelsea. That's not true. Yeah, it is. That is that is not true. Cruz doesn't have a World Cup. What, you're saying that his Champions League campaigns have been like his run. Absolutely, has been he ha- he has five of them and has so been instrumental in, in all five. And he Chavis, has Chavis has four. Chavi has whole, like, three and a half. We're not going to really count the one he didn't play in, and that's still less than five. Final, so then, and so it's then still then less Cristiano than Ronaldo five. never won the Euro Cup. Then getting injured in the final is not the same thing. Getting injured, getting them to the, the final, final, and then getting injured in the in the final, which he played in, and he got <laughs> injured, is not the same thing. Dude, Chavi, his game, his vision. Cool. Change you know what? Odria Zola is a treble winner with Bayern Munich. Did you know ask, that? Ask Pirlo. Ask like ask. Why don't we like put a, 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 a poll out there for people that actually whose opinions matter and hold weight? I would love to know who do players actually rank higher over others? Messi over Cristiano, uh, Xavi over Modric and Kroos. I would I would love to know that. I would love sure, to know. I'd love I to think, know as well. I'd love to know. I, I think you know who they would pick. I th- no, I, I actually don't. Know. So Pirlo yes. cho- said Xavi is better than Modric. Okay, that's one. Pirlo let's let's Xavi tally it up. Like, I don't know how this is. This is the measuring stick. One, as one of the greats, recognize great recognizing great Pirlo and and, and Xavi. Sure, Thank Diego. You. you know what? Scotty Pippen said LeBron is better than Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but and then two hours before that, he said Michael's the goat. Sure, yeah, you, you, you know who has <laughs> shitty football opinions? You know who has Ch- shitty football Ch- opinions? Diego not, Maradona not and Pelé. Pelé and Maradona, two of the greatest players ever, didn't couldn't none none of the shit they made sense made sense of what they said about football. We can't use these guys as a measuring stick. Okay, I, I that's all I'll say. I don't know. I think we should. Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to the ones. We'll listen to the You're ones blasphemous. that fit your narrative. I guess we'll put it that way. You're blasphemous, Kroos. Now you're throwing Kroos out there over Chavi. Absolutely. This is all recency, recency bias, man. No, it's and, not. You know, like I said, tally last it up. Time, tally it, it up. It took Chavi. Tally it up. It took, it took Chavi. It took Modric for Chavi and Andres Iniesta to leave the league to finally start getting in his own. And 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 you know, Chavi uh, and Iniesta were. Point. Chavi and Yesa were still in the league. What? When did they leave the league? It, they started to decline in, like, what, 2012? What? Decline? Man, we won the treble in 2015, man. When did they leave the league? Chavi left, like, yeah, 2016. Something along. Something so you're along saying that. Modric and Cruz only became great in 2016? After they left. Okay. This is what I'm dealing with here. This is what I'm dealing with. Chad, literally, Iniesta left. What? How old was he? These guys declined. What's going on? What's the, what? What is in the water in Barcelona? These guys decline when they're twenty-five. Stop. Stop. He's st- Modric is still playing. He's like fifty years old, and is he's great. And I applaud him. I commend him. I never like have have, have ever uh, spat an inch of disrespect his direct direction, nor would I. I hold. I think Modric is is a legend. He's he's one of the greats. Sheikh Hatiri says Schneider also took Netherlands to the World Cup final. Oh, that is Schneider. who cares? Schneider. Who Schneider. World Cup final? Shay, what? Who cares? <clears throat> yeah, you either win it or you about. don't. You either win it or you become. Yeah, these are the prerequisites for being the the goat. Get on the Ballon d'Or podium, back to back, third place, and uh, and win the World Cup. And play play ten seconds in the Champions League, and decline at twenty four. Those are the oh, prerequisites yeah. of being the goat. Stop. This is no. This this podcast has taken a nasty turn. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Sushi. Put some order into this, please, my dear friend, Mr. Sushi. Mr. Sushi says, not just Hugo Duro, their goalie also attacked him. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Sushi. Mr. Sushi also says, Diego, you are literally repeating a one hundreds uh hundreds of year old racist racist term. 
the term provocateur is a racially charged term. It's the same thing they called Malcolm X and MLK. Please stop saying that word. Is that true? I, I don't know that's, about that's that specific not... thing, but... Uh, Mr. Sushi, uh, you should know that I am n far from being uh, fluent at the English language, but this one, provocateur, being a racially packed term is new to me. And from somebody that's native sitting across from me, I, I thought I smirked at provocateur because the term provocateur, what comes in mind is like sexy lingerie. Uh, now I'm doing this. Now, now the ladies are going to come out saying I'm sexist. But that's that's what I provocateur is like being provocative and sexy, <clears throat> that sort of thing. I think there's even a lingerie here. Look, I just looked up provocateur and my Internet is filled with uh, sexy lingerie. You want to share your screen? Oh. <laughs> Listen, uh, obviously, never did I meant any, you know, race, uh, racist abuse when I say uh, a term when I said that term. Okay, bro. Here it says, "Excuse me, Mr. Sushi, someone who intentionally causes arguments or discussions or intentionally makes other people feel angry, offended, or uncomfortable." He is a provocateur. Mr. Sushi also says not calling you a racist. I'm asking you to stop using the term. That's all. I will stop using it if I find out that where you're accusing the word of actually meaning for it to mean that. Um, I don't right now. I don't see a problem with it. But I think we're ended that discussion. So there's no use for me to continue to use that word. Thank you, Mr. Sushi. I like your name, by the way, Mr. Sushi. Anything from La Liga, <coughs> Champions League, anything else that you wanted to discuss today? Uh, the, the last po There was a podcast I think we missed like two weeks ago where before the podcast you said you, you were about to bring the heat and then we couldn't record. Do you remember what those items were? No. I do not. Unfortunately, I had the tabs open, though, at that time. I do not remember the topics. But um, big weekend coming up, Atletico Barça. So that's a, a big one in La Liga. Uh, what else? I mean, I don't know. What, what, are we? When are we recording? You're back in uh, the Nova Scotia, so we, we should I'm back be in the. Connect. I'm back in the ice ice tundra. Um, probably Thursday or Friday. We'll have to talk about it off air. Um, there's a couple more super chats before you before we wrap it up. If you want to take those, of course. Um, <clears throat> Adrian says, just wanted to say that Xavi was practically irrelevant in the 2015 treble. Rakitic had taken his spot by that point. No, no, but Rakitic also uh, waste man, absolute zero, like non important player according to uh, Kian and all the Madridistas, when I mention Rakitic name, it's like, pfft. so I don't know. Somebody must have been playing well in that midfield for Barca to win a treble. What does that have to do with this particular comment? Oh, I'm just saying, I don't know. Like, if if it's not Xavi uh, or Rakitic, it's like, I, I can just never win. Whatever name no, I mention. The, the, it's like the, the point in this specific comment is that you can't just attribute every title that a player has been in the squad, you can't just like attribute it to them without context. You can't just attribute a Champions League title to Eden Hazard's name just because he was in the 2022 Champions League squad or Odria Zola with Bayern Munich getting in trouble I or agree. Messi getting a, a, a Champions League title in, was it 2006, seven, Listen, whenever I, that was. I agree. I understand. But I think that Xavi is specifically seeing the player that he morphed into seeing where he comes from his upbringing his teachings right so the, the the lessons that he absorbed from a little kid until he broke into the first team the coaches that he has played with the significance uh the impact that he had on the team the importance of him as a player an extension of the coach's arm on the field I think that goes beyond just counting actual minutes that he was out there on the pitch. 
What are you doing? Why are you holding your, your face like <laughs> you're that? You're giving him you're giving him the trophy because now he's the coach. He was he was acting coach. Player coach. Cristiano Ronaldo was in the Euro final shouting from the from the bench, giving player instructions. Coach. Player, player, I, I never said that it didn't count. I said, based on the arguments that Madridistas are throwing my way, I'm also going to take then Cristiano Ronaldo's Euro Cup away. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, we can't have these double standards. What? Oh, what's this? That's cool. Very nice. All right. So you save that one. I like personally, I think Messi. What was it? Was it 2006, 2007? You guys won the Champions League with Ronaldinho, the one against Arsenal. What season was that? Yes. I think I would give Messi that one because I think at that young age, he was such a great example to the older players of how to, like, the way he walked in the locker room. He had longer hair back then. It's harder to, you know, just it was such a great. Ex I would give him that. I, I would give him two Champions League for that season. Because he was so important in the locker room. Great, Shh. such a great young coach, man. Holy shit. I mean, look, you know, I never looked at it that way, but now you're saying it like that. You're making some compelling points. And hey, who am I to disagree with the uh, uh, chief editor of the biggest Madridista international platform of uh, the world? So hey, I'll, we'll take it. Thank you, Kian. You're welcome. <clears throat> Last one. Ram Key says Barcelona fans bring. Bring up Frank Ribery's case for 2013 all the time versus 2010, but they don't talk about how Messi still finished second that year. Wait, what? I don't understand. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, can uh, you say it again? So we Barca fans bring up Frank Ribery's case for 2013 all the, the time versus 2010. But they don't, so Ribery, what, he was at Bayern at that time. Yeah. So the, that year was Ronaldo one, Messi two, Ribery three. Right. So even I though think, what, what did Bayern? What, what did they do? A treble as well? I, 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 this is ten years ago. I don't even remember what I had for supper last night. <laughs> um, I do know that. This last Ballon d'Or was by far the most shady Ballon d'Or we've ever had in the history of Ballon d'Ors. Look, even Messi <clears throat> knows, or I should say, even Messi doesn't understand why he won that one. Yeah, and I respect it. I don't expect him to like hand it back. It's not his and, fault. And, and that's not like that's not, you know, that, that that that's not presuming. That's not guessing. I don't know if you saw that video of him with his kids. Yes. Where the, the, his son is like, why did you get Ballon? You got Ballon d'Or? No, you didn't. He's like, why did you get this one? And Messi goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great clip. Yeah, like, it's not his fault. Look, it's not his fault. He's a PR machine. Um, and benefited from the, the insane Barca PR. But, like, he is a recipient of it. I feel like there is... It's okay to have some asterisks and, and context added to some of these things we discuss when we're talking about who has the most Ballon d'Ors, who has the most World Cup trophies, who has the most Champions League titles. Like, you know, I it's it's fair to, to talk about some of the context involved in those things. All right. Are you up for a freestyle? I, no, no, no. Not right. today, man. I'm sorry. No, it's not no it's not there. It's not there. But uh no, look, I think it's 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 fun to talk about. And I just think that Xavi's legacy is being smeared here grossly. And, uh, you know, the slander. It's not slander, man. Needs the, to be, I, well, saying, know, like, that, saying that like he, he was insignificant in the treble seas, the last one that Barca had. I don't think the just, word insignificant is what was used. I You know me. I think Xavi is one of the greatest midfielders of all time. It's not slander. No, that isn't. I think he's top five. Anyways, I can tell the beat is coming to you. You no, should this do, is it. A just pretty, do it. This is a pretty weak beat, may I say. I know. It's the thing is, we ha we actually, <laughs> I know, we have to go in and add 
uh, our own beats. I'm I will. I will send you mine. Also. I will send you mine. Yeah. Yes, yes, Get yes. some actual real beats in here, and then maybe that'll inspire you. <laughs> I, I appreciate you trying to, exactly, inspire doing, me. Doing, trying doing trying to I feel can. the fire here. Doing what I can. Uh, well, you, I think, uh, like right now, if you had the right beat, it would be a good diss track. You could do a good diss track on me. On, no, on I would, Bruce, on Mojo. Mind you, like I, I also I am disgustingly bad at freestyling. It, I enjoy doing it, but I'm I'm horribly bad at it. Um, all of those that are subscribed to Patreon, Churros Patreon, will know that over the years uh, the the freestyles have dropped have been uh, hilariously bad. But oh, I do enjoy it, and uh, when the mood is right, I don't mind to uh, give it a crack. But uh, to, today is is is. No, oh, sorry. Fair enough. All right, man. Um, you and I will be back over on patreon.com slash churros y tacticas with a much rawer edition um, where our members, our patrons actually send in questions and Diego and I go through and answer them. And they're quite spicy and uh, we really enjoy doing that. So patreon.com slash churros y tacticas for the raw version of this podcast every week. Diego, good luck tonight at the Monjuic. Are you going to be, you're going to be in studio, right? Or... Yes, 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 of course, of course. I will be in studios, uh, unfortunately not at the stadium. But, uh, I mean, you know, just calling it live is already uh, a bit of a thrill. And, uh, yeah, man, it's Champions League, so we should... Uh, it's it's a night to enjoy. A night to... Uh, a night to enjoy. Wait, uh, are you... Is it going to be that thing where like we see your reaction to the goals or no? Like no, no, I'm I'm actually commentating. I'm just, just gonna com- so it's it's Barca TV where people can if they want to like, see it. Yes, in case uh, there's any culés out there listening, Barca One is the new platform. It will officially be launched April fourth, uh, if I'm not mistaken. My first show will be on April eighth. I guess I can confirm that yes, I will be going back to Barca. And um, a- April 8th is uh, the-, the debut of my uh, new program. In the meantime, I'm commentating the matches. And uh, I think you can already actually you can already sign up to Barca One because there's the the uh, Anestrenado they've premiered with a Ronald Araujo documentary, and the premiere for that was actually last week. So go check it out, Barca One. Uh, Xavi's last season for Barca 2014-15 he played uh, in total 44 games so is insignificant as wow and 44 really nothing wow. and nothing That's amazing nothing. 44 and the rest he was coaching um, no, well, no impact <clears throat> uh, no my question was is so people yeah. can can actually tune in and, and listen to you live right yeah. today Yes. No, 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 no. We don't no. have the rights to to broadcast it live. Okay, no. so it's going to be broadcast at tape delay. Yes. Yes, okay. yes. But the benefit of you doing it live is that you have no idea. Like it's your actual authentic reactions. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, enjoy it, man. And uh, I guess we'll be back over on Patreon.com slash churros y tacticas. Yes, Thanks, indeed. guys. Thank so you. much for all the uh, super chats and donations as well. You guys are sure. an awesome audience and crowd. And we'll we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Take care. Peace out. Later. Peace. Bye-bye.